So I surprised myself today in a good way. I was able to access flow state for a whole bunch of time. It's been kind of mulling around my head about what the conditions were that allowed me to get into flow state so easily and then stay in it so well for so long. To define flow state, we oftentimes need a task that is perceived as hard to do for us, but also a task that we are competent at accomplishing. So the task is hard and we're pretty good at it. Those two parameters need to be met in order to get into flow state typically. From there, I've been thinking a lot about the external and internal conditions that need to exist to get into and then stay in flow state. To get into flow state with climbing is often really kind of nebulous and fleeting. Because I think of the difficult variability in climbing, it's oftentimes hard to get into flow and then stay in flow for a long time. I've experienced flow for longer in things like skiing powder or skiing corn, where the task is more consistent or trail running sometimes. I've also experienced it mountain biking or dirt biking. And so it got me thinking about the external conditions being um, consistent. And it could be literally the snow consistency you're skiing on or the trail you're running on or the dirt you're mountain biking or dirt biking on. Because of the consistency in the external conditions, they're predictable. And if they're predictable, you can keep pushing at that high, difficult, challenging, hard level without going too far over the edge. Those sports that have that ability to have consistent conditions for longer allow us to access that flow state for longer. At least that's the case for me. And of course, flow state doesn't have to be just physical. It could be doing math problems. It could be writing. It could be reading. All of these things are also opportunities, of course, to get into flow state. It can be lots of different avenues you can access flow state from. But for me, it's usually a combination of physical and mental challenge that I'm doing something, some kind of problem solving or task with my body. Thinking further about it, the internal conditions have to be just right as well. You have to be fully present in the moment, just accomplishing the next task and taking in information and doing and taking in information and doing in this consistent, literally flow. There's no pause in between taking in information and executing on that information. There's no long-term thinking process. It's just the quick thinking of internalizing information, processing it, and then outputting the result of how you're going to interact with what's coming up for you. Oftentimes, that internal conditions, there's kind of like this bell curve between getting warmed up and getting into things and then getting into flow state and then coming back out of flow state when I start to get tired, um, either physically or mentally. In the context of climbing, a lot of times it means doing a really thorough and gradual warm up to then being in hopefully flow state for a pitch or a few crux moves on a route and kind of riding that wave as much as I can before realizing that, oh, okay, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting tired um, and things start coming back into my brain. You know, a, a lot of times in the, in the sports that I'm doing anyway, climbing, skiing, mountain biking, dirt biking, the risk is pretty high. So there's oftentimes an element of danger and getting hurt that can't be present, obviously, when I'm trying to perform at my best. There has to be enough time that goes by been able to alleviate the fear and be able to alleviate the hyper focus and just get into a more of a of just being present as the top of that bell curve starts to happen. As I'm building in that bell curve of the flow state, recognizing that I'm in it and out of it, and it may be moments here and there, it may be consistently a minute or two or five or 10. It just depends on the experience. And as I feel myself start to come out of that high, I start worrying about going too fast, not being as focused as I should be, being a little tired physically or mentally, and that kind of ends that kind of bell curve on that. So just to reiterate the parameters for being in flow state, at least for me, external conditions and the internal conditions. External conditions being, again, challenging, consistent, predictable is really nice. I can help look at those nuances, those small differences that allow me to get into flow state. And then the internal variables, of course, being my overall energy level, my attention, things like fear, anxiety, apathy, all those things count as well. So the task is hard and I'm pretty good at it. So I just wanted to share kind of those internal and external parameters that I have been playing with and experiencing and being present with, present to the last few months here. I think that flow state is really probably the reason we all do the things we do and take such great risks is because being in flow state is unlike any other experience I've ever had. All right, y'all. I hope that was helpful and useful and fun. Pop a comment down below about what your favorite activity to get into flow state is. 
and when the last time you were in flow state. If this interests you and you want to chat more about this or other topics, check out the link in the bio for the Ascend membership. I'd love to see you there very soon and continue this conversation. Have a great day.